Well, hello everyone and welcome to another DC Capstone Report. It's fun to be back again after a great A-Day game. Uh, during this week's podcast, we're going to take a look at uh, the A-Day game. We're going to review in the first segment, we're going to review the offense and the special teams. Uh, in the second segment, we're going to take a look at the defense. And in the third segment, we're going to take a look at what to expect from Alabama during the offseason. The D.C. Capstone Report is featured each Tuesday morning on Tide 102.9, The Morning Blitz with Martin Houston. You can listen live at Tide1029.com. Well, it's great to be back for another D.C. Capstone Report podcast. We want to thank all of our listeners out there who tune in each week to, to hear what we have to say on uh, about Alabama football and other things Alabama. Now, this week was the annual A-Day game, uh, Bryant-Denny Stadium, and uh, I had an opportunity to go and take part in the festivities and enjoy the time there. So what I'll be telling you this time would be from a first-hand perspective of what I observed. But overall, in this first segment, we're going to concentrate on offense and special teams, second segment, defense. Uh, and then so uh, just basically, uh, I want to give you an idea of our listeners out there, if you didn't have a chance to kind of see how it uh, puts together the kind of the whole process of what A-Day is at Alabama. But uh, Alabama, uh, under Coach Saban, has always had a competitive game for their uh, A-Day game, the Crimson and White game. And they do that by um, dividing the teams up uh, where you have the first team offense and the second team defense on one team and the second team offense and the first team defense on another team. Uh, and in this particular case, the, the, the Crimson team consisted – of the first team offense and the second team defense and the white team consisted of the second team offense and the first team defense. So what that means is you got the ones going on ones and the twos going on twos, a very competitive uh, makeup. So when the offense was on the field for the red team, crimson team, uh, then the first team uh, defense was on the field for the white team. So you had ones going against ones and vice versa when the the white team offense on the field, you had ones going, twos going against twos on the Crimson team. So it makes for a really good competitive uh, um, game, and, and, and this game was that way. So kind of to focus on our offense, we're going to look at the whole offensive picture. Uh, first, on the Crimson team, the first team offense, I've heard a lot of folks uh, ask me and questioning whether or not the, the offense looked good or not. Well, uh, first of all, let me tell you, this was a spring game. So you're not going to show a lot in the spring game from the first team offense. You kind of know what they can do. Uh, they, you, you know what they uh, are going to do in, 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 in practice, what they've been doing. And you're not going to give too much of your game plan because uh, these these games are all televised now. This was televised by ESPN2. All the teams you're going to play next year want to see what your new coordinator is going to do, what your new players are going to do what the schemes you're going to run, and, and you're not going to show a lot in a spring game. Uh, the the uh, Crimson team was coached by Steve Car Sarkeesian, Holman Wiggins, Brian Baker, Charles Kelly, and Sal Sunseri. Uh, the white team was coached by Pete Golden, Carl Scott, Jeff Banks, Kyle Flood, and Charles Huff. So there was the offensive coordinator was on the Crimson team. The defensive coordinator coached the white team. At this time of year, you kind of think your first team defense may be a little head in your practice. But what we've been hearing coming out of the, of the scrimmages was that the first team offense was ahead of the defense. So I'm really pleased that the defense have made some progress to catch up. I think what we saw was the first team offense going up against the first team defense. We saw a, not a pretty vanilla offense, not running a whole lot of different schemes or plays. And you had the uh, first team defense is kind of caught up to that and was able to do a, do a good job. So I think overall, when you, when you review this and you look back at it, you're gonna find out that uh, you sit back and you realize that, hey, those people who are detracting, those who are, who are saying, hey, what's wrong with their offense? Really nothing's wrong with their offense. Uh, the, uh, the, it was vanilla plays and we, and we didn't execute very well in some of those plays. And the t first team defense really hit up, up their game and did a really good job. So that being said, you know, clearly Tua, Tua Tagovailoa can throw the ball anywhere. He's got some great offensive weapons to, to play that play with. And, you know, Jerry Judy is a, is, a, is a guy on the offensive side of the ball that stood out in this game. Uh, he, caught, he caught some passes down the middle, one pass down the middle, outrun everybody in the end zone late in the game. But early in the game, he, would, he, he missed some passes. You know, uh, uh, um, 
Ruggs missed some passes. Uh, Devonta Smith caught, I think, most everything was thrown his way that he could catch. But uh, we had some unusual drop balls. I think that a lot had to do with our defense pressing uh, and, and, and getting in there and knocking some balls away and get, maybe hearing some footsteps. But uh, basically, I, I thought, uh, Tua did a, had an average performance. He overthrew some players. They weren't on the same page. You could tell it's early in the, in the season. They weren't on the same page on play calls. Uh, receiver went one way, ball went another. You don't know in that situation whose fault it was. Was it the receiver? Was it the, was it the uh, quarterback? Or was it just a complete uh, lack of communication? But I think overall the offense didn't show much on the, on the uh, crimson side of the ball. And you had the first team defense that really stepped up and played well. On the white side, he had the second team offense, and, and uh, Mac Jones started at quarterback. He had a little rough patch where he, he made some mistakes early on, uh, but then he overcame that, and late in the game, he really did well. You know, Talia uh, Tagovailoa, uh, to his younger brother, he, he, he comes in in some series, and he had some mistakes early on uh, that led to some interceptions, but then he overcame that, and later on in the game, did really well. Uh, in my opinion, it looked like the first team, the second team offense was ahead of the second team defense. And I think that's consistent with what Coach Saban has been saying all along. But the, first, the second team offense was really uh, able to, to make some plays uh, against that second team defense. Uh, there was a, a, a couple of standouts on in, the, in offense. You know, I think Mac Jones did well after he settled down. Talia did well after he settled down. Uh, Brian Robinson, I think, ran the ball with effectiveness. I think he's going to be a, really a force to be reckoned with this year in running the game. Neither, neither side, Crimson or White, uh, ran the ball very well. Uh, but every one of them, uh, we, we know it, it has some capability to do that. I think both Najee Harris and Brian Robinson had the capability to run the ball really well. I think uh, the surprise running back may have been Chadarius Townsend. Chadarius Townsend, you know, we mentioned on this show last week, Move from wide receiver over to running back. He's number 12, and he really had some really good plays. Uh, you see, he got, he's very instinctive. He's very athletic, uh, very quick, has some shifty moves. So I think he may be that change of pace back. Uh, we'll see better off uh, later on when everybody gets in the fold uh, after, in the fall, but he very well may be that change of pace back that can come in, catch the ball out of the backfield, and make some moves uh, uh, to uh, that scat back to make himself – uh, more uh, available uh, down the stretch to maybe come in that third third or fourth back in to take advantage of maybe some tired legs on the defense. So look for Chadarius Townsend to, to really make a difference. So the player I thought that stood out uh, on offense uh, from everybody in the game was the most valuable player of the game, and that was John Mechie. Uh, John Mechie is number three. He's a wide receiver. We've been talking about him for the last two weeks on the podcast as being – Really good in practice and, and showing some skill set that's elevated him to getting some even some reps with the ones. Well, him and Jalen Waddle, uh, they teamed up as wide receivers and with Tyrell Shavers on the on the white team. And I'm telling you, uh, Jalen Waddle and John Mitchie and Tyler uh, and Tyrell Shavers gave uh, the quarterbacks on the white team some very good targets to throw the ball to. Uh, you know, Jalen Waddle, you just uh, you can't say enough about him. Talia hit him for a touchdown pass in the end zone. And I remarked to everybody sitting around me, there's no way you cover that ball. You can't cover it. No matter how good of a defensive player you are, it was, he was running away from the defensive back. The ball was thrown way away from him into the corner of the end zone. And Jalen Waddle just speedily ran to it and caught the ball for a touchdown pass as he went out of bounds. So there's really no way to cover that. That's just a great athletic play. Well, as great as Jalen Waddle is, and I think he's fantastic, might go down as the history of one of the fastest and best wide receivers ever at Alabama. This John Mechie guy, uh, he's a first-year player. He's a freshman, came in out of Canada. And uh, he comes in and, and is really, uh, really makes a difference uh, right off the bat. It looks like to me uh, that he, everything that you've heard about this guy in practice about what he's done uh, has really been the truth. He's a real deal. So he comes in, makes a big showing, uh, catches uh, 100 and over 100 yards receiving, uh, touchdown passes, just really does a great job of, of, of catching the ball, creating space uh, against the second-team defense. And So I, I'm really excited about uh, what our offense can do down the stretch. I think the first-team offense, coupled with the reserves on, on the, that played on the white team, uh, we're going to have a really good offensive. Uh, I think our, our, our offensive team is good down the stretch. 
Now, our special teams, we had punting and place kicking, uh, extra points and field goals all in this game. Uh, it looks like uh, Joseph Bullivus did better on the kickoffs. He was a little deeper, more consistent and deep. The freshman Reichard, or Rickard uh, from Hoover, uh, he didn't kick the ball as deep as, uh, as Bullivus did. Uh, but the freshman kicker was more was very consistent on extra points. Uh, Reichard hit every one of his extra points right down the middle. The first extra point that Bullivus uh, kicked uh, hit the upright, but it went through for for a point. But still, it hit the upright. Uh, so I think that 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 still remains to be seen where we are with our kickers. Would it be one of them win the job for everything, or would it be a combination of Bullivus and Reichard, uh, one kicking off, one doing field goals, and one doing extra points, or a combination of all of, of each of them doing those? So. Uh, I think uh, we, we hope to see some improvement in our kicking game as we go into the fall. Uh, the other was the punting. Uh, the punting was left to, to Schuyler DeLong and uh, Reichard, the freshman kicker out of Hoover, also is not only a place kicker, but he's a punter. And I think he did a fine job as a punter, but I think Schuyler DeLong has made a lot more improvements than, than people have given him credit for. I think he had several good punts uh, on the day, uh, and so I, I look for him to, to make the most improvement and let that translate over in the game. You know, last year, the scrimmages and the practice weren't a problem for Scott as long as it was a game. So we need that to transfer over to the game time. But I think that's why you see Mike Bernier, uh, who punted last year in the transfer portal. He may transfer away this, this fall simply because we got Scott DeLong and then you got Riker as a backup if DeLong fails uh, to get the punting done. So I think we're in good hands going in. Hopefully see some improvement in our special teams. For overall offense, I don't think we showed much, but the second team offense really did good. We got some standout players on offense. Look like we're in good hands going into the fall. Uh, special teams has improved some, and I hope for them to even get better uh, going into the fall. Well, on our second segment here, we're going to talk about our defense. Now, uh, I think uh, defense on our first team defense was very impressive in this game. If you've heard me talk about the white team out did the uh, the crimson team uh, in in they, they kind of uh, took advantage of the second team defense. And I think that shows what Coach Saban has been saying all along. We lack depth on our defensive side of the ball. I think outside of our first-team defense, there's some, a lot of places there in the, uh, that we're going to have to rely on some young guys, uh, and, and it showed in this game. But let's talk first about our starters on defense, some of the guys that stood out on that white team that had our first-team defense on it. I think uh, Trayvon Diggs played an excellent game. I believe he was going up against the best wide receivers in the nation in Jerry Judy and uh, Henry Ruggs and uh, Devontae Smith. When he was on either one of those guys, he knew how to play them, made some adjustments. I thought watching Trayvon Diggs the way I did, not only last year when he was healthy, he was playing the man. This year, I think he's playing a whole different game. He's, he's got his head knowledge of the game is much better. His knowledge of schemes is much better. Him being able to play on the corners um, and, and make adjustments on, on different uh, backs, uh, wide receivers coming out of the backfield, backs coming out of the backfield, wide receivers coming out of different formations. He, he did a great job of doing that. So I think we're in good hands with Trayvon Diggs. And on the other corner, Josh Job has emerged as a possible starter at corner. You know, Patrick Sertain started as a freshman there last year, but that's allowed Patrick Sertain to slide in and play the slot receiver. Uh, and he did a really good job on that. So I think our, our – with, with, with Xavier McKinney and Jaron Maiden and then you throw Cheyenne Carter in there in the mix, we got a really good first-string uh, defensive backs, and they showed well in this game. I think they held our, our wide receivers as best they could uh, and was a big reason why, we, uh, why, we, why the white team won this game. You know, the defensive line, can't say enough about them in this game. you got Raekwon Davis and LeBron Ray started as we expected. But in the middle, number 94, D.J. Dale, a true freshman, uh, started for uh, started for the white team defense. Now, uh, in, in my mind, this true freshman out of Pinson, Alabama, has really just vaulted up the scale here in his in his early signing period and, and through the scrimmages. It's a it's a person who's really uh, can make a contribution next year. So, I look for DJ Dell to, to to really improve on that and do well. But he he stopped that middle up. That's one reason our offensive production on running the ball for our first team wasn't very good because he was stopping that middle up. Uh, and, and every time. Now behind them, you know, our other, our, our second team defensive line did not gel as well. You know, Bearmore made some plays, Stephon Wynn made some plays, Davida Muska made some plays, but overall it wasn't just a great physical performance. And it's hard to, it's hard to address it, assess it because your quarterbacks are not ta tackled, they're touched, and 
So it's hard to see how good they did. But I think overall, our, our first team defensive line is good. We probably need to work on our depth there. Our, our outside linebackers, rushers, uh, you know, you have to mention Yabi Anoma here. Yabi Anoma has really stepped up his game. I think he's done everything he could possibly want him to do, and I was so proud of him in this game. And, and being the outside rusher, him and Anthony Jennings both did well, but I think Yabi Anoma just really can tell his quickness and his, his ability and his passion to play is up this year over last year. So I look for him to really do well. And then our middle linebackers, I think, starting Dylan Moses and Joshua McMillan and Jalen Moody all played well in this game. Uh, I think uh, I think there is again is our weaknesses. Uh, outside of those three, you got Markel Benton and, and possibly Shane Lee on our they played on our Crimson team. They did a really good job. But what happened to Ali Cahill? Where where is he going? He's kind of disappeared in that in lineup. I'm, I'm kind of concerned at that. You know where his head is uh, going in the fall will be a, a big question mark going in. But overall, I think our defense did well, both uh, as a head of the offense and was really pleased with the performance that we had from from the defense in this game from our first team defense uh, if i'm not mistaken this this could turn out to be one of the best defensive first team we've ever had the problem is going to come in do we have the depth and that's something we got to develop uh, over the coming weeks in the fall and get some young guys in here and if you have to rely on young guys will they be able to have the maturity uh, in those tight games late games to, to be relied on to discipline uh, that it takes to play this alabama defense and i think you will and this possibly could emerge as one of the best defenses that Coach Saban has ever had. Uh, and based on, you know, it's a lot to talk about based on one spring game, but uh, this, the, the defensive backs, the starting linebackers and, and edge rushers and defensive line, really a really good team if we, got, if we can develop the depth over time. Look for this defense to really show out next fall. Well, in uh, – Wrapping up here in our third segment, we're going to look at what, what do we look at uh, going out of this. You know, it'll be a lot of off, big off season now. It'll be a lot of downtime. So, what do you want to see in the Alabama players and, and the scheming going forward? Well, number one is uh, you, you want to not see Alabama players in the headlines in any newspaper or radio uh, leads. That means they've gotten in trouble most likely in the off season. So, we don't want to have any problems in the off season. That's our number one goal in, in, um, coming out of the spring game. We didn't have number two is we didn't have many injuries in the spring game other than Jedrick Wills coming out of spring practice injured, had a couple of guys in non-contact jerseys, but and Terrell Lewis still rehabbing his knee. But you want to see all these guys that are nicked up injured, you know, see them well over this fall, uh, over to come back in the summer uh, practices all feeling well and, and rehab well. So you want to see a good healthy team come back. Number two. So number three, what you want to look for is what kind of what kind of a uh, jump are you going to make from spring? Uh, to the summer what are you going to do on your own what are you going to do on your own during this time off on your off-season workouts what are you how are you going to be motivated those players that are motivated to work out on their own and come back even better make a jump from spring to 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 fall summer practice are going to be the ones i think that we can count on to really make a big impact this coming year and i think we're going to look at this to see if they're going to buy in on the process we've got a lot of young guys that started in january and they got some accolades here in the spring game and done well. I'm talking about DJ Dale, John Meachie, uh, Shane Lee. Uh, these young players has, has come in early and made, a, made an impact. But what do they do with that? They don't just stand and, and become complacent on what they've done, but they want to get better. They want to get in the weight room on their own, get on the practice field on their own, catch balls on their own, kick balls on their own. All the things you need to do when no one else is watching you to do the best you can be. So that's the third thing I think is important for see Alabama. Uh, do well and the fourth thing is finally can all the coaches uh, gel together uh, and finally come together with a cohesive unit when we come back in the summer have part, start putting in the game plans uh, I think if all this happens together if we stay out of trouble if we get healthy we all become motivated to do on our, on their own what they need to do to be better players when they come back in the summer and the coaches gel together for the game plans, I think the sky's the limit for this Alabama team. I think the passion is there. I think the, the, the ability is there. I think the discipline is what we need to see. Are we going to get back to that Alabama factor of being disciplined uh, throughout, throughout your stay at Alabama in that process? And the last three things you need to look at are, are there any freshmen that are going to come in and report in the summertime that can make a difference between summer and fall? Uh, are you going to see any guys that are going to help shore up this defensive uh, lack of depth that we have? The biggest running backs come in that can show up the lack of depth we have at running back. Will it be a tight end that comes in that can make, show up the lack of depth we have at tight end? All of these things remain to be seen over the offseason, but it looks like 
if Alabama does what I think they're going to do, we have a great team to put on the field come this summer. Well, that's all we have for this week's podcast. I appreciate all of our listeners out there. Next, next week, we're going to have a preview of the NFL draft. Uh, and then we're going to take some time off after that. And, and then we'll have a, a comeback right before the SEC media days. And I mean, the SEC uh, meetings that happen in June and, 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 the, and, the, and the summer workouts that start to happen. We'll have some reports from that uh, from time to time. But this is DC with the DC Capstone Report signing off and telling everyone roll tide.